Thanks, Chris. Great to see you as well, Tony, uh, as ever. A very warm welcome as well to everyone watching on the Sky stream here in Milton Keynes, the latest fight bubble. But of course, we are without Eddie. We wish him well. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the only one to test positive, everybody else here negative. And uh, it just shows what a great job Matchroom do with the full testing through fight camp through this week. The safety and health of everybody and especially the fighters is paramount. We cannot wait for a Sunday night show. Tony sparkled on a Sunday night show many years ago uh, at Everton, of course, and we have one this Sunday. Main event comes uh, on the back of the Liverpool Villa game, so it should be a fun Sunday evening on Sky. It's a huge bill here, topped, of course, by Joshua Bowatsi uh, in his return, and we'll be talking to Joshua a little bit later, but it is a stacked card. And we start with these two. There's a little bit of needle here. There's plenty of pride. It's for the English middleweight title. Linus Adofia, the champion from uh, just down the road in Luton, was telling me earlier he'd have uh, packed the MK Don Stadium out if we could have had fans, unfortunately, not behind closed doors, of course. And John Harding, we know his story well. We've seen him in action before. A, a great fighter and a great match. Let's start with you, Linus, uh, the champion. Uh, I know that means uh, uh, a lot to you. Um, you're on the way up. You're unbeaten and uh, very confident of, of taking your career really to the next level now? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, really confident. I've been here before, been at this level for a while now. And, um, you know, I just feel like it's time to it's time to showcase that and what an opportunity to be on Sky Sports to show that, you know? And that's it. And for those who haven't seen you yet, just describe your style a bit and what you bring to the table in the middleweight division. Um, I don't know. I feel like my style is I adapt to whatever's in front of me. So if I need to box, I can box. If I need to fight, I can fight. And I feel like I can adapt to whatever's in front of me. Well, you've got John Harding in front of you on, on Sunday night. How high do you rate him? Oh, I expect the... I've seen, I've seen John before. I've seen him fight before. I've, seen, I've shared rounds with him sparring um, yeah, a couple of years back. I know what he's about, but I'm expecting the best John Harding because he's been with top, top trainers. He's been out with uh, Dillian White in Portugal training. I know he's going to come in fit, strong, fast. I know that the best John Harding is coming. Now how excited are you about getting back into the ring after this such a strange year for, for all you fighters? Oh, Matt, I, I, you know, I, I didn't really think I was going to get another opportunity to compete this year at all and defend my title. So to be on a platform like this is absolutely fantastic. So I'm, I'm going to take it with both hands and I'm really, I'm just really, really happy to be here and actually able to showcase my skills on such a platform. It's great to see you, Linus. John, you as well. Uh, he talks very highly of you, a lot of respect from sparring, etc. cetera. Do you, uh, do, do you think the same about Linus? Um, yeah, you know, um, I've got a level of respect for Linus. I'm quite shocked that he's actually talking like that because in other interviews he's qu talked quite different. Uh, talking that he's going to retire me and, and, and things like that. And I was quite shocked. I saw him in the corridor and he was screaming like a pregnant woman about to give birth. But um, he's here talking highly of me. So, um, you know, I give the respect back. But um, Sunday, Sunday is going down. We're going to, we're going to give, it's going to, I'm happy that we're the first one. Cause I don't, I don't want to wait. I want to be in the changing room waiting. I just want to get it cracking and I can't wait to, uh, get cracking with this guy here. Is there two sides to you, Linus? Because you seem charming and very polite up here. Oh, I've never, there's no disrespect my side. I've never said anything unfair or disrespectful towards him in any interview. I've just spoken my Linus, mind. Linus, Linus, you said, you said the pressure's on me. Yeah, you said I'm 36. Um, uh, I've, I just, my, I've lost already. You said the pressure's on me. But uh, truthfully, the pressure's on you. I've got lesser fights than you. I'm born in your face, six. So if you lose to me, what does that make you? The pressure's on you, bro. That's what you were saying in your interview. So now you're trying to change your story. Right. I'm 27. Won every single fight. Challenged that high level. Fought high level opponents. Been on this stage before. Fought at this stage in the sense of rounds and championships. Your last, the only fight you've ever had yeah. that was a championship level fight was your first scheduled 10 rounder. You're 36 years old. No disrespect to you. You're 36 years old. You challenged for the English before, and you you weren't you weren't successful. Everything I said is facts. No disrespect to you. Okay, I challenged for the English title. Yeah, I took short notice three weeks. Yes. Okay, we all know that. Yeah, but at that time you was mandatory. That should have been you. I know you got offered for that. Because if that was me and I'm mandatory, there's no way you're leapfrogging me over to to fight. But what you did. 
what Linus does, he waits until it's vacated. Pick who he's going to fight and then fight for it. And then, and then, and then you sign to fight someone that you would have easily beat even if you pulled your hamstring and twisted your rotator cuff. You would have beat him. Yeah? You were signed to fight him on the little show. So when you're saying these things, I'm so confused with your lioness. Like, it's like there's two different sides of you to... When I see you by yourself, you know, oh, no, I didn't say this, no, I didn't say that, oh, well, no. And then in front of everyone in the cameras, you're your big old tough liner, so I'm, I'm so confused. So let me educate you a little bit. When you win a title, you get a voluntary and a mandatory. The mandatory is set, you can't avoid that. You get to pick your voluntary. You were Cullen's voluntary, he picked you. Then after he had to fight me, which he vacated and went to fight Cash, which is why I fought for so it. Why didn't you push for it? Why didn't you push for it? We didn't hear no noise. I, I, I These we're fighters. This is what we do. We make noise. We push for things. That's what we do. But then you're telling people that you've offered to fight me twice. Me? Hold on. Okay. We're as boxers, yeah? Let's, let's push it. You've got a ranking. We're trying to get up the ranking. I'm behind you, so you're trying to lean behind me to fight me twice. What belt do I have? What My Versace belt. You want to fight for it? Like, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Oh, yeah, I've, I've offered you twice. But would I say no to you? Come on, please, Linus, you're, you're, you're talking doo-doo now. All right. John, let's talk about you, your training. Yeah. How's it gone out there? Aye, hey, yeah. hey, 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 <laughs> talk about me now. Training has gone beautiful, man. I'm so happy, you know what I mean? Um, the only frustrating thing is that uh, the dates were getting pushed back. I scheduled August, then it was September, then I was going through the dates. But um, you know what? What's happening now? We're about to, you know, we're about to make it make it happen. You know what I mean? We're going to be the first fight set off, bringing up, bringing back the love for boxing. You know what I mean? And I, I, I can't wait to get it on. I can't wait to just give the fans good fights. This is the fight they want. This is the fight they need. A lot of people have called for it. I've called for it. You know what I mean? Uh, um, though that he, he makes up the story that he's offered me twice. That that fairy tale story. I said no, no. We've offered him. They've refused. But now, there's no excuses. We're getting it on with the first fight, and I can't wait. And this is what we want, isn't it? Really good matches yeah. on these big cards. Yeah, this is, this is what we want. This is what, we, we, what, what the, the, the fans need. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of um, his fights as well, he's just he's cherry-picked his way to the title. You know what I mean? And then now, you, you've got me now. And for him to even see it as a step-up or see it as a 50-50, uh, bruv, you've got 15 fights. I've had 10. It, sh it should be you as the favorite, but nah, it's not, because you know what I bring, and I bring war, and I'm not scared of you, 100%, there's no fear, I'm not nervous, I even if it was tonight, even if it was tomorrow, I, I step on the scales, I make weight, I eat, I'm eating three times a day, I'm not struggling with weight, I'm ready to go, and I can't wait. It's great, and you look pretty chilled now. It's just business. It's just business. What are we going to see on Sunday evening, not Saturday night, on Sunday evening uh, between the pair of you? Is this finally the chance, John? You've had a, a, an incredible journey and, and, and huge respect for that, for the way that you've got yourself and your life in order. It's, it's a brilliant tale. Can you become the English champion and how do you do it? Yes, yes. Um, uh, you know, this Sunday, I'm going to challenge for it and I'm going to take the title for him. You know what I mean? Um, I, I can't wait. I feel confident. I've had a nice long camp. And I'm going to do it. I know that he's, you know, by talking, he's looking past me. Nah, this, this, this cherry picking has gone wrong for you, man. This Sunday, I'm taking that title. Lock on. Everybody lock on. This is a good show, and we're going to kickstart it. I, I say this fight's going to be the best fight of the night. Linus, unbeaten in 15. Will that O continue? Will you retain your title and uh, tell John what's going to happen on Sunday? As long as I listen to my coach, do everything. Uh, I've done everything right done everything right coming up to it. I, I can't see it going any other way than me staying undefeated and still the middleweight champion. I, I've done everything right. This, this is only going to go one way. Really looking forward to it. Style should gel beautifully. We kick off with the English middleweight title. We'll bring the two of them uh, together for a, uh, a distance, socially distance face-to-face uh, -face here. Gentlemen, if you just come up to the marks and we'll get the... Uh, if you just put your masks on and go up to the marks there, that would be great. Thank you. Ten rounds for the English middleweight title. Linus Adofia 
from Luton and John Harding Jr. from New Cross in training out in Portugal. Here we go. Take your mask off. And then we're going to... John, you look fantastic. You look, uh, you look well. You look ready to go. There's a big smile on your face and plenty of chat up there too. Yeah, um, you know what it is, man. I've been training with the elite, man. I've learned the difference. I've learned that, you know, you can't just just take short notice and try and just jump up. You've got to um, train properly. You've got to eat well. You've got to, you know, see your physios, strength and conditioning. I've been learning a lot from being around professionals, you know what I mean? And um, I just, I'm just excited, man. As you can see my energy, um, it's probably the first fight. I don't feel this nervous, you know what I mean? We've, we've shared the ring before, so we know each other. But the only thing I have over him is that I've, you know, I've, I've, I can say I've increased in terms of, um, I've had two different trainers, Tibbs and then Xavier Miller, and um, around elite people. So I'm excited, man. And, and I, I can't wait to really just give back the, give back to the fans, the fans that are showing me so much love, the messages and support they're, they're doing, the main thing is boxing wins and I want to just give back to the fans and give them a good fight. You love being here don't you, I mean under the lights, could you ever have dreamt it, I mean the, the, the road that you've taken and it's been a really hard one hasn't it and I think maybe that's why there's a lot of people out there that have seen the way you've turned your life around and uh, you're on the straight and narrow and you're doing this, this great stuff, it's fantastic to see. It's, it's absolutely Easy. I can't. It's like a dream. So it sometimes feels like I'm just dreaming. I have to pinch myself, and it's like you know, I, you know, a lot of people reach out to me um, that I've known from the past, or some still incarcerated, like, and they talk to me like, wow, like they, I'm like a motivation to them, and and just just for people to um, say to me, you know, um, you've done it, I can do it. Like, do you know how that means to me? Because I think like, look at me, like you know, I've just been out of prison for five years, and to get this far. And for it now to be touching people, that's when I started realizing, wow, this journey and this fight is more deeper than just me having my one over him and being that champion. I'm representing a lot of people that they can turn their life around, they can, they can change it around, they can be something. They don't have to be, I don't, they don't have to have a single mother, single father. They can be something as long as they believe in themselves. So um, I'm so. Oh, man, I'm, I'm over moon. I'm over the moon, man. I'm, I'm able to be myself. Everyone's accepted me. I'm, I've got a jokey personality. I like to crack jokes and be the life of the place, and, and everyone's just taken to me, and I've just loved it so far, man. I can, I can just be me. I think Dillian White's loved the story as, as well, but now you've got the opportunity to become a champion. You, you had a chance with, with Jack Cullen. It didn't quite work out. You've had more notice. You've had a better camp. Is this the night for you? Do you think? I feel I, this is the night for me, 100%, 100%, um, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I know that when I look in his eyes, you know, he's, he's overlooking at me, but he's overlooking me, but he knows and he can feel there's that confidence in me. Even when I'm talking, like, you can just see there's that confidence in me. And you know what I mean? I've, I've shared a ring with great people. And I've, I've, I've shared a ring with Dill, you know what I mean? And, and to have to step in with him, I'm going to bring venom. I'm going to bring war. Um, you just just lock in October fourth. You, you you know it's, it's going to go down, man. I mean, it seems like a, a little bit of needle off the stage, and, and and on it he's all sort of smiles and and you know. But that's I guess that's the that's the business, isn't it? It's a psychological yeah. business, and it's a business where ultimately it'll be decided in the ring. Yeah, you know what you said. The na you put the nail on the head because even today when I come, I'm thinking, am I going to hear a lot of this cussing? My you know my age, my experience. I've had a crack in it. And then now I'm getting praised that um, you know that you know who I've trained with, how long I've trained with. So it's probably, I don't know if it's a mind game or not. But the bottom line is October fourth, we get cracking, we go down. Boxing is back, and we're bringing it back, man. I, I can't wait. John, we wish you well. We wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much. Thank you, so Thank you much. very much. There he is, John Harding Jr. 
and uh, he will be meeting Linus Adofia, English middleweight title on this Boazzi Challenge card, Sunday the 4th of October. Remember uh, Chantel Cameron as well, fighting for a world title. We have uh, Alan Babich as well, who's been entertaining us here, uh, of course. And uh, we're just uh, setting the stage up for the, um, the next uh, fight. So I better get back up there. Chris, thanks very much. Yeah, very exciting uh, prospect here, uh, fighting um, out of Takeley uh, in Essex is uh, John Hedges. So we're going to see his uh, professional debut for Matraman on Sky, uh, live on uh, Sunday night. Uh, in with Jan uh, Arden, who is uh, uh, a professional who has won a couple. Uh, good wins as well. Uh, lost four, based in the uh, Manchester area, but originally from the Czech Republic. We'll get straight over to John. John, you're 18 years old. You're very tall uh, for a super middleweight, and you're going to bring, what, something different to the division? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I've worked, I know I've only been, obviously, alive for 18 years, but I've worked all my life for a moment like this, and I'm going to grab it with both hands. So tell us a little bit about your, your amateur career, because there were some standout moments. And for those who haven't heard the name yet, John Hedges, just explain a little bit more about yourself. In the amateurs, 44 fights, 40 wins, uh, seven international titles, four nationals, GB title. Um, yeah, I went all over in the amateurs, travelled the world, doing the sport I love, and yeah, really made an impact, uh, represented England numerous of times, and yeah, here on the pro stage. Yeah, I suppose the big question is why turn pro now? It, it is young. Do you feel that this is the right time for you, or is it the sort of adrenaline of the professional ranks and looking up to one or two people? What is it? Do you know what it is? Um, the opportunity come, and I couldn't let it slip. I was ready for it. Mentally, I've been ready for this since, since I started boxing. It's, it's my dream, and it was just coming a little bit earlier than what I thought. So I was always ready. Um, my last win was the ABA Finals, won that. So I'm coming off a great win, and I'm confident, and yeah, I just can't wait to get started. Let's bring uh, Jan in. Jan, you're uh, originally from the Czech Republic, uh, now in, in Manchester. Just tell us a little bit about your journey to this point. So my journey was about boxing. I came here to, to this country because of boxing. It's popular in this country, and so that's why I like it. And how are you settling in, in Manchester? It's the right place for you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I like, that, like that city. I like boxing in Manchester, so yeah. You've got a couple of wins over a couple of Brits so far. What are you going to bring to the table and the party on, on Sunday night? What's on your Sunday, style? I'm going uh, gonna to make a drama show. That's what, what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm confident. It's uh, have you seen any of, of John in the amateurs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a good fighter. He's, ex he's, he's got experience. Uh, he's an he's a international champion, uh, national champion. So, yeah, he's gonna, I think it's going to be a good fight. But you're ready? Yeah, definitely. I'm ready. Good to hear. John, what are we expecting stylistically from you? Uh, what do you hope that, um, I guess, the fans sort of go away from on Sunday night talking about? Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm going to go in there and just do what I do best. Um, I adapt to any fighter. And, yeah, it's, it, it happened on the night. I, my game plan is strong. Me and the coach have been through it. And, yeah, I'm confident and I'm ready to go and make an impact. It's, do you know what I mean? 18 years old, I'm ready to put myself on a big stage. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get this on. John Hedges and Jan Arden, if you step up for a head-to-head, uh, -head, that'd be great. Thank you. On those marks there, John. John, John, John step back. back. That's your man. On there, please. 
Four rounds in the super middleweight division. The professional debut of John Hedges in the Yamaha. Oh, is the front three, John? Yeah, from the Czech Republic, now based in Manchester. Right Live from the Marshall Arena here in Milton Keynes. John. Yeah, you got it on that yeah, Xavier, so, good to see you. We got a little break, so uh, just a good chance to, to catch up with you. First of all, let's talk John Harding because uh, that's the Sunday night business. Um, he seems relaxed. He seems um, glowing. He seems he seems absolutely up for this. Yeah, I think uh, there's a couple of things to remember. John's been up at this level before, um, boxing the big car before. He gets a very good opponent, you know, put up a good fight, a very good fight, a very short notice. Um, I, think, I think that's why he looks so comfortable. Um, the other thing is, you know, when you've only got two, three weeks notice for a fight, it's hard to make weight. You have to do all kinds of crazy things to make sure you make weight. And even though you make it and it's a goal, uh, when you get in the ring, you won't feel the same. Um, this time he's had a long time to prepare. Um, he's been out in Portugal with me for months, that's how I've actually got close to John. Um, I'm calling myself the travelling man now, honestly. Everyone's been, most people have been stuck at home this year, but me, I've been up and down. Um, so we've had a really good camp out in uh, Portugal. Came back for a few weeks after Dillian's fight, uh, continued sparring, and then the date got pushed back slightly. So I went back to Portugal to continue training Dillian, and John came back with me, and he's in very, very good shape. Looking forward to a good fight. I don't know if you heard, your, you heard his interview earlier on the stream, but he was very honest about you know, life since he's come out of jail and, and the sort of the motivation I think he gets from people sort of admiring his story and, and, and looking up to him. He got quite emotional in, in the interview. It is, a, it is a great advert, isn't it? A great advocate for what can happen with boxing and, and how you know, men and women can turn their lives around. Yeah, I mean, a lot, a lot of coaches, you know, give up a lot of their time and a lot of it early stages is voluntary. Um, I've worked alone around a lot of young people for years. It's uh, one of my main, my main jobs. And, uh, you know, John's story is one of the reasons why I got involved in coaching was to help young people fulfill their full potential. You know, um, me and my business partner, you know, we opened our own gym so we could avoid gun crime, knife crime and just show the kids that, you know, we do have a safe environment for you to come and learn boxing and, you know, take up a different sport. And uh, that's why I'm so happy that now, you know, John can tell his story. He's got to this position, but listen, at this stage, you have to perform under the bright lights. And when it's all said and done, that's going to be the difference on Sunday. We're all looking forward to that. I can't let you go without asking you about our good friend Dillian White. And uh, obviously, it sort of seems quite a long time ago that unfortunately the knockout happened. Uh, are we dealing with it? It's one of those things. It's just back to the, the drawing board and just getting it right in the rematch. Uh, do you dwell much on it? Or uh, is it a case of picking up where you left off? He was doing a lot of good in the fight. Have you, have you sort of come to terms with it and how you, uh, you know, rebuilding for the, uh, for the massive fight in November? I'm probably having to do more rebuilding than Dillian. He's a very, very hard man. Um, you know, he's had to pick himself up before, up before and, um, and get back on the, the horse and, you know, get to work. He's just that kind of character, very, very good fighter, will fight anybody. And, you know, as you saw, as soon as the fight finished, I need the rematch. And his mindset has been exactly what you want to see from a coach. And uh, we just got straight back to work. You know, he was doing some very, very good things in the fight. Um, I think he could do a lot better. Even though he was really good in the first four rounds, he can be better than that. And, um, you know, it's heavyweight boxing. I mean, it was as much a shock to me as it was to everybody, that fifth round. Um, just didn't expect that, not from where we were. Um, you know, we were looking good. So, you know, we just got to do better. So we do have to change one or two things, obviously, because we didn't get the result. Um, and that's what we're going to do. Fantastic. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you very much. Good luck with John on, uh, on Sunday night. And uh, we'll see you soon. That's brilliant. You just Thank move out there. That's great. We, uh, we're straight back on with uh, the next. And I think I can see uh, Akib Kliens and Kane Baker. So I better get back up on
here we go again. I absolutely cannot wait for this one, guys. We spent all week in the, in the fight camp bubble together, Akib Fiaz and, and Kane Baker. I got to know you guys so well. It was Eddie in between you before. Now it's, uh, it's my turn, and uh, we, we go again. It's a few weeks on. Um, Akib, let's start with you. You're the one that, that pulled out um, on the weigh-in day. Just tell us a little bit about that, what went wrong, and how you've got through that and recovered and rebuilt for obviously this massively important fight for you yeah obviously it was um, disappointing um horrible for me at the time but you know it is what it is i'm a big believer in you know god has a better plan and obviously this was his plan and we're here now um fights on sunday it would be an exciting fight for the fans and i'm you know looking forward to it it was just illness that you've got over it's fine it's no problems and you were back in the gym presumably yeah within 10 days or so i was back in the gym um obviously not perfect but know good enough to be back in the gym and working again and um, yeah and now obviously we've had a couple of weeks I'm back it's great that Eddie and Matram have made this fight actually happen they promised they would Kane you were devastated you were disappointed you were you stayed on though for the night um, but it was it was your sort of dream chance wasn't it and uh, how do you look back at it um, well I've kind of stopped looking back to that um, yeah so I'm just looking forward now uh, and this is real again I'm excited again excited as I was last time more prepared than I was last time um, yeah and just ready to go you've had an interesting career already of course you, you bring the professional experience to to the fight this time you, you've you've taken fights uh, you know fights that maybe weren't winnable or were a big risk and you didn't mind that you've taken the losses you've also you know won a title and uh, you know you don't know what we're going to get with you but it's always exciting there's something that's going to happen with Kane Baker isn't there Hundred percent. Yeah, I'm excited to watch myself and see myself. I'm a fan, boxing fan with a license, and uh, yeah, for all the fans at home who were having a beer and cheering combinations at the telly, I'm, I was one of them a few years ago. Still now, are, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still out the beer. But now I'm EA, so yeah. Um, you, you rate Akib obviously highly. What do you have to do on Sunday night to get that big win for you? And it would be a big win. Oh, it'd be a massive win for me. I rate him really highly. He's a talented fighter, young hot prospect. Um, and I respect him for that, but he's going to be a different. There's going to be a different part that he hasn't seen yet, and then we're just going to see if, if Akib's up to the challenge. It's his first step up, really. So uh, I'm the man to make him step up. It's uh, it's over eight rounds. Do you think that will play into your hands? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely. Um, I'm eight round, ten round. I've I've done them. The rat
Jim up in Manchester with Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis. He gets uh, another opportunity, should have had one in fight camp, but had to pull out uh, sensibly when, uh, when ill on the day of the weigh-in. Uh, the health and safety absolutely crucial and has been all the way through fight camp and here in Milton Keynes. It's a, uh, a big night and we are just uh, waiting for the next two to hit the uh, dais and it will be the heavyweight battle between Alan Babich and Niall Kennedy. Apologies again for the, uh, the technical issues we've been having but um, I think everything is back on track. We've been working hard at Sky to, to fix that. I can see Alan Babich out of the corner of my eye, so I better get back up onto stage because you don't want to be, uh, uh, you want to be keeping your distance, don't you, from Alan? Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Tony. Of course, finished uh, as a heavyweight here in the heavyweight division, the Blue Ribbon division. Uh, of course, all the attention on Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, and of course, Dillian White and Povetkin. But you know what? There's plenty of other characters in there. One of them was, uh, was on that card, the White Povetkin card. Uh, Alan Babich, I'm sure many of you know him, the savage from uh, Croatia. Great character. Uh, Alan, you're, you're here because you love fighting and you re you're, you're a throwback, aren't you? And, you, and you, you, just want, you just want to get in there and entertain. First of all, thank you for that introduction. You're good, you're good, <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Got me pumped up. So yes, yes, I'm just so happy to be here again. You know, people, want, people love me, obviously. They, they want to see me fight. And as long as you want to see me fight, I want to fight every time. Well, well that's it. I think they, they're enjoying your in-the-ring performances and the destruction you're bringing in these early knockout wins. And also your interviews afterwards, because, um, you know, I, I think people like the alter ego. They, they're not quite sure what to make of you, but you're entertaining, certainly, Alan. Yeah, I am. I think I am kind of an enigma, you know, because even I don't know yet what I can do. Because <laughs> every interview I've been getting better and better, you know, so I don't know what to expect from me, so <laughs> let alone them. You know. What do you expect from yourself in terms of boxing um, and how far do you think this journey can go because obviously there's there's huge treasures in the heavyweight division is it about belts about money or just about getting down and fighting yeah i don't care about no belts i don't care about no money you know i say a couple of times i have a dillian white managing me he's my brother you know he's my i gave i gave, gave all of that to him you know so i don't care he just rings me and said you got to i find out about neil kennedy the day or, or on the poster you know when i get out to the poster that's the day I found out about him, you know, because I don't care who I'm fighting. You know, I just want to fight. I want to fight ten times next year. You know, I want to fight three times this year. So you know, I want to fight. I want to fight as often as I can. You know. It's good to hear. But he didn't know he was fighting you. Now, did he know you were fighting him? No, no. We got late <laughs> notice as well, but um, it was a fantastic opportunity, and we jumped at it straight away. We were delighted to take it. I mean, you're chalk and cheese. You've had a very different career, a very different journey in, in life. Tell us a little bit about that. You're with the great Pascal Collins, of course, as well. You've been stateside in Ireland. You've got plenty of wins. So tell us a bit about the journey. Yeah, I turned pro late enough. I was 30 when I turned pro, so um, I'm just lucky. Packy had the connections in America, and we've been based out of Boston, so that's the journey, really, so far. Um, of Irish support base as well, like, you know, so we have a great following in Boston and I'm very lucky I call it my second home now, so I've been, I've been blessed to have family and support and friends over there, so, but now look, we're, we're in England, it's only an hour away on the, on the plane and 
my family, my friends, my whole town will be up watching, supporting Sunday night. So this is brilliant. This is probably easier for everyone. Now, Alan says he's an enigma. What, what do you make of him? No, Alan <laughs> has done fantastic. I not listen. Uh, anyone that knows me, I'm not a. The likes of sort of Bacoli and Dave Allen, Tom Little, of course, and uh, Philip Hergovich, I know, is, is one, you know, a, a fellow countryman yeah, yeah. Yep, that you, uh, you want to get into the ring at some point. So there's plenty out there, but you've got to deal with this big fella first. It's not easy, is it, this, this boxing career? Of course, listen, I have a lot of Irish fans, you know, and a, a lot of them message me, please be good to Niall. He's a good man, you know, he does charity work. He's a soldier. He's a very good man. I see that. No, and it's, it's going to be hard to activate the savage. You know, he's such a nice friend. You know, I don't, I don't want to hurt him, you know. But I, I, I will do that in the ring, you know. I will have to do it. But I'm not going to say nothing bad about him now because I do respect him. And I have a lot of respect for boxing, you know. And he has a greater score, more victories than I have, you know. So you never know, you know. I don't think, I don't see him beating me, really, honestly. I think he's average boxer at best. It's just my opinion, you know. He, he could be much better than that. But, yeah, uh, but if he said, he said he's gonna, he gonna do some trenches for me, you know, he's gonna make some trenches. So I would really like that so we can give people an honest fight. He's Irish, Irish blood, of course, is, you know, I know a lot of Irish boxers, you know, they're my, my idols, you know, so. The one thing we know, it will be exciting. No, it's true, gonna be exciting, <laughs> for six, for a second. Yeah. While I've got you up here, I must ask you about Chalich, though, who's fighting uh, Bawatsi, because you shared a ring with him four times in the amateurs. He's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, listen, Chalich is a fighting man. You know, he's been fighting since he was six. You know, people don't know that he has more fights than Bawatsi in amateurs. He had, like, five world championships, uh, five Europeans. He was uh, AIBA uh, League, Profi League, in uh, WSB series. You know, so he has a lot of experience. If he can sum it all up into this one fight, it's going to be a great fight. You know, you can see it. He's a Houdini of boxing, you know, he's like this, you can't catch him. <laughs> I tried to catch him, I threw, our first fight, I threw like 350 punches. You know, I go, I cut him with maybe 20, you know, <laughs> he's a great, he's a great guy, you want to see it. Yeah, good to see you, we're looking forward to that with Joshua Boatsy. Final word, how far can this Alan Babich... Kennedy. Guys, if you just step up, put the masks on and uh, do the face to face. That's brilliant. Thank you. Alan Babish, 29 years of age, from Zagreb. Four fights, four wins, four knockouts. Ruthless in with Niall Kennedy, with much more experience as a pro. 19 fights, 13 wins. Switching between here and the other side of the hall with America, great trainer in Pascal Collins as well. Don't miss this. Look, thank you. I can just hear Tony Bellew saying you're his favourite prospect in the whole country. And that's, that's big coming from the bomber. <laughs> yes, it is, because I love Tony Bellew. I was his fan, you know, in the, in the hay fights. I always pick him to win, you know, in both of the fights. I was fighting with my guys, 
They were like, oh, kids okay, going, no, oh, Belly's not been, I see it. Yeah. It's crazy as I am. So take me back a bit, Alan. When did you want to become a boxer, or did you, or were you going to go another route? What, when did it all come about? Well, listen, I was just, just uh, every Joe, you know. I was really bad at school. I wasn't good at school, so that wasn't an option, you know, to go to some college and stuff. We didn't have money, you know, anything. So I was, I was a waiter. I was... in love with boxing obviously you're an amateur a good amateur and now you're uh, unbeaten as a pro you're part of Dillian's team team white and that must be amazing to be around you know that sort of level that sort of experience and you're very close aren't you yeah listen it, it may seem like it, it is all been fast but I've been 10 years into boxing you know and I've been in so many camps I've been in edge of Kabel camp I spar with Arthur Baterbiev I sparred with Hrgovic. I, I, I was the only sparring partner with Hrgovic when, when he started. So I sparred with a lot of guys and it had to come up. You know, This is not just a fluke. You know, it's just a fluke. It, it had to come. I just, I, I would continue to serve. When I get sick, you know, you feel a lot of things, and then the fans get me out. You know, so, such good messages, bro. You know, they say I'm their idol and stuff. So I have only four fights. So really, the fans are a big part, and I want people to be a big part of my story. You know? I want them to feel with me. You know? I want to bring them in. Great to hear. We wish you well on Sunday night against Noah Kennedy. Thank you, Alan. Thanks very much. Thank you. There's Alan Babbage, the, the savage. Apologies for earlier on with the, the technical issues and uh, also uh, a little bit of bad language from Alan up on the stage. But you know what? Isn't he a character? Tony Bellew's favorite prospect in the country. How far can he go? Is he big enough at heavyweight? Is he good enough? Is he skillful enough? But I tell you what, it will be absolutely fascinating finding out. Nar Kennedy awaits him on Sunday night. There's talk of Tom Little, maybe. I'm sure Dave Allen, Martin Bacoli. You know, Philip Hergovic is the one he really wants. And, uh, you know, we were showing him a video earlier of, uh, of Philip Hergovic and sending him a message. And I don't think Alan's his best mate. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fascinating to see how that carries on. Um, time to get back up on the stage. Jonas, what a wonderful duel that was. Katie Taylor, of course, 
retaining her belts against Delphine Persone. We had uh, Cecilia Brackhouse House in the States losing to Jessica McCaskill, and that's given an opportunity to these two, and this should be a fantastic matchup. Another one for the vacant WBC super lightweight title on Sunday night. Let's introduce first Chantel Cameron, who's from Northampton, in with Adriana Araujo from Brazil. We'll come to Adriana in a minute. Chantel, I want to start with you. Um, it's been a long wait. Uh, you've, you've, you've bedded your time well. We know that you're a good amateur. You're unbeaten, what, in 12 now as a professional. Is, is this the right time, do you think, for you to be fighting for a world title? Yeah, I think it's perfect timing. I think last year, during Jeremy Moore and Nigel Trevor, a one world, two weight division as mantras, and now I think it's perfect timing to get my world title shot. A few minutes ago, we had Akib Fiaz sitting, sitting here and saying that the whole camp is absolutely bustling up there with, with Jamie and, and Nigel. Have you, have you had a, a, a real, obviously you're around terrific boxing people all the time, is there a real buzz up there? Oh yeah, massive buzz. It's a, it's a fun gym to be in. You're learning and you're training hard, but it's just, it's a fun gym. Now for everyone out there that, that hasn't seen a lot of you, just tell, tell the fans what to expect on, on Sunday and how you're going to grab this world title. Um, Probably a little bit of everything. I think I'm going to box, I'm going to be aggressive, I'm going to stand there, have a fight, but also I'm going to be smart. Being smart's the key. Yeah. I mean, you had a great amateur uh, career as well, but this would be the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? Becoming a, a world champion in these times as well where the, the, the spotlight is, is on the women. It's fantastic. We're getting all these great fights and it's, uh, it's about time, isn't it? Oh, definitely. The uh, fight camp, the women were flying the flag and now I'm ready to put on a good performance as well. What, what was your favourite fight there? Terry Arthur and Jamie. Yeah. Uh, Wasn't it great? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Let's bring Adriana in. Adriana Arujo from uh, Brazil. Welcome uh, along. We've got a translator here as well. Uh, six fights and six victories. So the battle of the unbeatens. Um, how confident, uh, Adriana, is she of winning this world title and taking it back to Brazil? How confident do you think she is? por essa luta pelo título mundial e se você planeja levar o título de, para o Brasil. Primeiro, eu agradeço estar aqui. É uma honra estar voltando novamente em Londres. Londres que, para mim, eu tenho como minha segunda casa. Já fiz uma festa, enorme festa, aqui em 2012. E, com certeza, estarei vindo para conquistar o título mundial. Uh, it's an honor to be in London again. I had a big party in, 12, in 2012. And I'm, I'm planning to bring the belt on Sunday to Brazil and be another, to do another party. Yeah, we remember Adriana winning bronze in London 2012. She, she medaled there. Um, also gave Katie Taylor a standing count, I think, in the, in the amateurs as well. So and this really good form there, a very, very good amateur. But as a professional, how does she beat Chantel Cameron? Como profissional, você pensa, como que você pode derrotar a Chantel Cameron? Tenho muitas lutas no boxe olímpico. Adquiri muitas experiências, apesar de só ter seis lutas no boxe profissional, mas o boxe olímpico me deu uma verdadeira experiência onde eu pude lutar com as melhores do mundo e obtive resultado com grandes atletas pelo mundo afora. Uh, actually, I have a, a lot of experience as amateur, more than 300 fights. As a professional, only six, but I have a lot of experience, as I, as I said, and I beat great fighters as amateur, so I believe in my experience, both as a professional and as amateur. And finally, and I've seen quite a lot of Adriana on tape, very, very exciting style. Is she going to bring that sort of real aggression into the ring on Sunday? Ele viu o tape de você e gostou muito do seu estilo agressivo. Você planeja trazer isso para o ringue domingo? <risos> Sempre. Pitbull. Pitbull, ele gosta de morder, ele gosta de sangue. E com certeza estarei em busca de sangue domingo. <risos> yeah, for sure. My nickname is Pitbull. Pitbull likes to bite and blood. So I'm looking for blood on Sunday. Yeah, it should be, Chantel, thank you, a terrific matchup on, uh, on Sunday. You, you say you've got to use your smarts, you've got to use your, your ring intelligence, and, and maybe that's the way to get through this. But do you think it will be one of those great clash of styles that will have us talking about it, like we have been the previous ones in Fight Camp? Definitely, she's a tough opponent, and I give her all the credit, and I'm not underestimating her, but she doesn't beat me. Simple as that. 
You're that confident, no doubts. Finally, what will it mean to hear those words and the new? It mean everything well. to me. It'd be one of my dreams come true. And then the world's your oyster because there's some fantastic matches beyond, isn't there? I'm going to focus on Sunday and then have a look beyond that. I thought you'd say that. The world title, vacant WBC super lightweight championship of the world. It's Chantel Cameron and Adriana Dos Santos Araujo. If you come up, ladies, to uh, your mark there. And we'll have a head-to-head. -head. Chief support, a fantastic fight. And all the women doing this absolute proud at the moment. Katie Taylor, Tasha Jones, Terry Harper, Rachel Hall and Shannon Courtney as well in the fight camp. Just great fight after great fight. Expect another here. Thank you very much, Chantel Cameron and Adriana Araujo. We're going to bring uh, Jamie Moore in here, my old friend and colleague and former great fighter himself. Now, a terrific trainer, Jamie. Your, your stable are absolutely flying. We saw uh, Carl Frampton the other night. You've got your Akib Fiaz here. Um, Chantel, what a terrific talent she has. Um, she's gone under the radar a little bit. And uh, is this the time now that people will really find out how good she is? Yeah, I think so. Um, she's obviously, this is the first opportunity to, on mainstream TV. You know, she's had a few opportunities in the past, but nothing the sort of stage what she's got for Sunday night. So, uh, so yeah, she's, she's quiet by nature, she, but, but as soon as you put a pair of boxing gloves on her, she just flicks the switch. And, um, and, I, and I'm excited about Sunday because, as you just mentioned there, the styles, it's a real good clash of styles. I know Chantel's... Um, I think she's probably a level above in, in terms of boxing ability. Punching power is probably probably level. But uh, but Chantel's got a, a little bit of a habit of when she gets clipped, she'll uh, she'll, she'll stand the ground and she'll and, and a she, in, in a little bit of a way, um, uh, offense becomes a, a defense. So um, so that can only make for a good fight. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be an exciting fight. But I think it won't watch Chantel come out on top. She won't have to go looking for her, will she? Not at all. <laughs> you know, I think. Adriana was saying there, uh, you know, she's a nickname to Pitbull, and rightly so. She comes and, and she only really knows one way to fight, which which is good for us, but it's also good for the fans because the styles will blend really nice. I remember when the McBriggans were raving about Chantel. You've had her for a certain period of time now. How highly do you rate her? I mean, you're, you're obviously a boxing connoisseur as well. You've seen the, the great performances from the women lately. Is Chantel Cameron as good as them, or, or maybe even better? She could be potentially better, and I think Sunday will be a good coming out party. I really do. I think um, you know everyone who knows Chantel and knows knows what she's capable of. I've been raving about for a long time, but like I say, I think Sunday everyone's going to sort of stand up and take notice. I don't often say this, but I'm going to kick you out here, Jamie, because we want to bring Chantel in because she's the star. Thank you very much, Jamie Moore, who will be obviously in Chantel Cameron's corner. Uh, we've heard enough from him. We've heard him for years. Chantel, I know you're quiet. I know you're nervy. I know you're you're ready just to get into the ring and, and perform. But just um, just tell us a little bit what this means to you to fight for a world title after you know first donning the gloves when you were a kid. And, and, and having sort of gone through such a journey already? It would mean the world to me. Just, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to say I'm boxing for a world title. Obviously, it's a dream come true, and when you turn professional, that's what every, everybody wants to be winning is a world title. So to be boxing for one is just amazing. It's going to happen on Sunday night. You've got a very experienced uh, corner with you, of course. Um, Fight camp was interesting because there was no crowd, of course, and, and the fighters seemed to me to sort of, it brought them up a level in a way because they didn't have to worry about anything outside of the ring, the ticket selling, the who to impress. And Do you feel that, that it's just going in there and doing your job on Sunday? Yeah, I feel really relaxed. I was saying earlier, this weekend really felt like a fight week. It's been so different. I'm relaxed and I'm just ready to fight now. Who have you looked up to over the years? Who are your boxing sort of idols? Definitely Mark Tyson, I love his style, and Sugar Ray Leonard, and Lemon Chunker and people like that. And Jamie Moore, obviously. No? <laughs> obviously Jamie Moore. Always watch, oh, yeah. <laughs> Always watch Jamie Moore. <laughs> Finally, just give us a, a, a prediction of, uh, of Sunday night. How do you think the fight will go? Um, will it be exciting, and, uh, and will you become world champion? Um, it's definitely going to be an exciting fight. I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight. She's, like she said, she's a pit bull. She's going to be there to be hit, but 
um, she, she's going to play into my hands, so I'm, I'm looking forward to her coming and bringing it because she'll walk onto my shots and I think I've got the power to hurt her as well. So it'll be an interesting fight and I think I'll win by points. Another world champion for Britain. It's brilliant, isn't it? It'd be great, wouldn't it? Just got to make sure I perform. Thank you, Chantel. We wish you well. Thanks very much. Jamie, Chantel, good luck on, uh, on Sunday evening. And uh, that should be a fantastic chief support, of course, even if it is a chief support, the world title between Chantel Cameron and uh, Arrujo from Brazil, who is, was a terrific amateur, 300 fights. She uh, beat Tasha Jonas. She had uh, Katie Taylor in a little bit of trouble, standing count, although Katie beat her. Um, and she'll give absolutely everything in terms of excitement and aggression. And uh, I can see the, uh, the main event just getting ready uh, behind me uh, as we uh, continue and finalize the stream here, the final press conference. I can see JB, Joshua, who well, actually just in the corner of my eye, so uh, I'll head back to stage and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get this uh, final press Thanks, Chris. Yeah, it's indeed been a long time since we've seen Joshua Boazzi in a ring, but we also welcome Marco Chalic uh, from Croatia. We we're hearing a lot about you from uh, Alan Babic, uh, your old rival uh, in the amateurs. He rates you very highly, uh, both unbeaten. Let's just look at the records. Joshua Boazzi unbeaten in 12, Marco Chalic unbeaten in 11. It's a fantastic fight to top the bill here in Milton Keynes, the Marshall Arena, on Sunday evening. First of all, let's go to JB, Just Business, Joshua Boazzi. It's about time, isn't it, my friend, that you're, uh, you're back with us? It's been way too long. For sure, Adam. 400 days and counting, man. So I'm glad to be back. Um, got a good opponent. I'm looking forward to it, man. 400 days out of the ring. Um, listen, I can't wait to box on Sunday, man. Obviously, this year has been difficult for, for everybody, the health and safety, the most important, uh, and, and it's been a real troublesome year. How have you got through it? Because, of course, there's the frustration of, of not boxing, but also of sort of being with loved ones and stuff and amongst this tough time, keeping your motivation mentally and physically keeping strong. Like you said, staying around family and loved ones. Um, there's a lot of negatives that's happened, but for me, Adam, it's about looking at the positive side of it dwelling on it, hanging on to it, and running with it. 27, 12 and 0, um, I still got years on, man. So um, I'm just waiting, and the opportunity's here on Sunday, and that's all I'm thinking about. I'm just fixed on it. That's a great attitude, still just 27, called one of the most exciting fighters worldwide now. Um, do you believe that you're going to fulfill your destiny? And what is that, that real dream? What do you want to be remembered at when it's all said and done? I know that's a way away, but I know how serious you are about the business. Most importantly, what I like to do is to surpass expectations. So whatever it is that's been placed on me, I want to surpass that. And besides doing what I do in the ring, as I've always said, there's a lot of things outside the ring that I want to do. Um, but strictly now, forget things outside the ring. As you know, Adam, I'm fixed on Sunday. So that's what um, I'm looking forward to. And that's the immediate goal. And that's my only goal right now. I have nothing in this life that I want to do right now than to win on Sunday. So that's all that matters. Biggest test to date against an unbeaten fighter in Marco Chalic and having been out the ring for so long on Sunday, do you think this is the hardest one yet for you potentially? We're yet to find out, man. Um, the question that I'm asking myself is how deep is your well? It's a reminder that goes off on my phone every morning. So when I wake up and I don't want to train, I think, oh, come on, let's get it. So um, we'll find out, man. Um, he's unbeaten, he's hungry, he wants to fight, he wants to win. I've got the same attitude and... Um, in those ropes, I know I'm a totally different person. Right now, I'm cool, I'm calm, polite, we can talk and everything, but in that ring, I know what time it is. Yep, there is a change with Joshua Boazzi. Marco Chalic, welcome. Welcome along. Thank you. Good to have you here. Um, we're hearing very good things from you, not just from Alan Babich, who, who obviously likes to talk, um, but, but generally, you know, you're unbeaten. You've, uh, you've got a, a, a huge opportunity here against somebody that, that obviously is, is rated very highly, Joshua Boazzi. First of all, tell us a little bit about your journey to this point and how ready you are for this chance. 
Uh, I'm ready. Uh, this is my uh, like a dream come true. So uh, I prepare myself well, and uh, I train boxing for more than 12 years. So this is the big opportunity for me, and uh, I'm ready for it. Alan was calling you a bit of a Houdini. He couldn't he couldn't get hold of you. He couldn't land those punches. Is that your style, or can you mix it up? What are you going to bring to the ring on Sunday? Well, we'll see on Sunday. I have a really, uh, very good opponent, so uh, I will do my best and uh, try to win, of course. But, uh, yeah, my style is like uh, hit and don't get hit, but uh, we will see. I'm ready for everything, so. You rate Joshua Boazzi highly, like, like many of us do. Have you seen weaknesses as well as all the positives that people are talking about? Uh, all of us have uh, weaknesses. So, uh, like me and uh, uh, like I have weakness, and he also have weakness. So, but uh, we find out on Sunday. Thirty-three years of age. Maybe you didn't think this opportunity would come. Headlining a big show, Sky Sports main event against Joshua Boazzi, one of the, the, the hottest sort of hopes in boxing. Um, can you steal the show? Can you be the first man to beat Boazzi? And we'll, how? We'll see on Sunday. But. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's my uh, biggest and uh, toughest test uh, right now in my career, but uh, I, I study him. I know him since amateurs, so I know he's a very good, good boxer, and uh, I will do my best and try to win. You're ready? Yes, I'm ready. It's good to hear. Joshua, of course, a lot of talk about Anthony Yard, Callum Johnson, the triumvirate of you, and there's Batebiev and Bivol and everyone worldwide as well. It's a fantastic division to be in. Is this the start of, of real momentum, do you hope, for you after the, the big gap out, that if you take care of business on Sunday, you want to be back in quickly and maybe sort of fight three or four times in the next nine months, say, if you can? Yeah, absolutely, Adam. Um, again, things have happened. I've kind of stored things. So on Sunday, hopefully we get that out of the way and I aim to be back out one more time before the year ends and um, just keep active. Um, there's a lot of big fights out there and I want to be in them. I want to make them happen. Um, I just had to keep learning. I'm never out of the gym, so that's one thing about me. Even with all my travels and everything, I always find a gym first. When I'm packing to travel, the first thing I do pack is training clothes. Then I pack clothes to just hang about in. But um, yeah, man, we hope it's the start of something new again. I'm fresh, man, and like I said, it's all about Sunday. I'm looking forward to it. Good challenge in Kalic, and um, I'm looking forward to it, man. You are fresh, but remember, you're one to watch for 2019. You are one to watch for 2020. You've got to get on with that, haven't you? What are you going to show us on Sunday night that, that will make everybody believe you can become one of boxing's big stars? I'll be myself, most importantly, Adam. That's, that's all you can ask from someone. Be yourself. I'll go in there. Um, there's not much to say as in what I'm going to do, this and that. I'll go in there. The bell will ring, and I know my mindset and how I present myself. And I'll be myself all the time, man, and I'm confident I'll get the win. Just business for Joshua Boazzi. Sunday night, join us, the main event. Joshua Boazzi and Marco Chalic come up here uh, for the face-to-face. -face. If you just put your mask back on, that will be great. Cannot wait to see Boazzi back from Croydon, of course, unbeaten in 12 27 years of age. Is he going to go and mix it with that terrific brigade at world level in the light heavyweight division? He's highly ranked by all the governing bodies, but Marco Chalic knows what an opportunity this is for him. He is also unbeaten. And the official, someone O, as I look at Tony Bellew, has got to go. Please, Marco. Please start, please. That's it. Sunday night, Sky Sports Arena, 7 o'clock, and on main event, after Liverpool Villa, Chantel Cameron's world title tilt, and the return of Joshua Boazzi. Joshua, go back by that seat. That's it, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is the uh, press conference done, and we'll uh, we'll just grab a word with the fighters here. We're going to go with we'll go with Joshua down here. Joshua, thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. 
Joshua, great to see you again. Great to have you back on, on Sky Screens. Have you missed us? I haven't, man. All of this, um, it's a bit different this time, but it's, it's good to see the familiar faces, um, to see what you guys do. You guys are the best in the business, so I'm glad to be part of it, man. What did you think, sort of watching fight camp and, and looking at that and seeing sort of everybody back in the ring? Did it make you a little bit jealous? It did. Um, I must say, it's something I didn't expect you guys to pull off and the presentation, everything. I should have expected it, man. Um, you guys are the best in what you do. Matchroom stepped up, the presentation, everything. Hats off to all the fighters as well, man. They put on a good show and it was, it was very interesting to watch. The key is that you're back and that's the important yeah. thing. You need ring time and you need to uh, sort of remind us all about what you can do. Do you think that Marco Chalic will bring the best out in you and you'll be able to really sharpen your tools again? Um, I'll be out there again, Adam, to do a good job. Um, whether it's an opponent that people rate or don't rate, my aim is always to go out there um, to box to the best of my abilities. And um, yeah, he's going to come and try to win, which always makes it interesting. Um, like you said, we, we're both undefeated. Some, someone's O has got to go. And it won't be mine. I'm confident that it won't be mine. So I'll be in there doing the best I can do. Like Anthony Joshua, obviously part of that stable, um, you're very single-minded. You're, you're very, you know what you want and, and you deal with you, don't you? It's about you in there and it's, it's, whether it's Chalich or Yard or, you know, Batebiev, whoever it is, it's, it's about how you go in and perform, isn't it? Absolutely, all the time, man. I think it's an individual sport, Adam. There's a team behind you, but I think once you get in there, stay true to yourself, um, pay the price that you need to pay. But when you're in there, it's really man to man. You're, you're ringside, you, you commentate on all these fights. And like you see, no one can help you but yourself. So um, I'm a firm believer in being yourself and staying true to yourself. All goes well on Sunday night, which obviously you expect it to, and, and challenge becomes your, your next win. How quickly do you want to move into to world title shots? I mean, are you interested in the Yard Johnson sort of fights, or do you want to go straight in with, you know, a Bivol or Batebiev? These are fights that I'm interested in, Adam. Um, we're both, we're all from England, um, and I've always said the rivalry between Eubank, Ben, um, Watson, they were great to watch. And now to say that I'm in a, a position where I've got other dancing partners, it would be nice to mix it up, man. Well, I would say when the crowd is back to life, we want to see it being at the O2, um, everyone buzzing, coming out. Um, it's fun to be part of it, man, definitely. That might be a while, though, as we know, and it uh, could be weeks and months before anything like that is, is happening. So is it a case of you've just got to get back and fight behind closed doors? I mean, are you looking forward to that? Because it's, it's a business for you. A lot of fighters I've talked to have sort of enjoyed that, the fact they haven't had the extra pressure on. Or do you like to thrive off a crowd and you love that atmosphere? Do you know what? Again, I'm very fixed, man. Crowd or no crowd, there's an opponent that said, I'm coming to beat you. And for me, that's enough. That's all I needed to know. The guy said he's coming to win. That's all I needed to know, Adam. And that's motivated me enough. I'm hungry enough and looking forward to it and eager enough. It doesn't matter whether it's in Eddie's back garden, in Milton Keynes, the O2 or Vegas. It doesn't matter. Adam, I would have hosted in my own back garden if I could. But we're in MK and the show must go on. The show is going to go on, Joshua. Wish you well on, uh, on Sunday night. Great to have you back. Thanks very much. That's brilliant. And thank you very much for watching the stream. That is the press conference uh, done and dusted. Great night on Sunday. Don't miss it on Sky Sports.